Now, whoever built this circuit, drew this up, really gets the credit. I cannot remember where I got this from, but this is what the uh, what mine is based off of. It's basically the same thing. Um, so I, sometimes I'll use 50Ks instead of 10Ks. Um, that 1K there on pin 6, I actually go a little lower than that. You, you kind of have to adjust it and uh, play around and watch the signal to see what's still stable. But this is generally the setup. <clears throat> it's kind of interesting how they've got this wired up. But it works and it works pretty good. Um, and at the same time you can put an audio signal um, into pin 4. But the only thing to keep note here is uh, the uh, capacitor on pin 5 which is 750 picofarad. You don't really want to go any lower than that. Uh, seems like or the uh, duty cycle is going to start getting wonky. Um, so you, I, I like to keep it around 1 nanofarad, something like that. This is one of the first ones I ever made. It's, uh, looks like crap, but uh, since then I've made a bunch and they're all about the same. Uh, but it's turned out to be a pretty handy, uh, like a universal driver. This actually rings a little bit. You can hear the uh, filament ring. So the duty remains pretty solid, regardless of the frequency uh, with this circuit. Here's what the signal looks like on this one. We got 12 volts input. So you see, I've got a little play it more or less off in this position than once I get to this point. Start to see very low, very low, low, low duty cycle. And it's more or less 100% at that point. Um, 98, something like that, maybe. Then I'm going to bring it around. Let's say about 15%, it says. And we're at about 2 kilohertz. This particular one goes up to about 21 kilohertz but this little scope here is also not very accurate because I've got a bootleg uh, set of probes on there but you're not bad see But I can't really tell <clears throat> with this because the frequency doesn't read it's very high frequency. But for me, when I get too low in my timing capacitor, it uh, starts getting wonky. So, like I said, keep it about one nanofarad minimum. Now it seems pretty pretty robust, even up in the uh, higher frequency. It's 20 kilohertz isn't really that high. It's just barely up to the point where I can't hear it. And I showed this circuit in another video, but this is basically the setup. Um, pretty much the refined setup I, I've been using. Another SST driver. Same PWM. Same deal, a little smaller. Driving a uh, flyback. Bam! 
this Slayer Exciter. Bam. This other SST driver. Same deal. Bam. This VVS circuit. Bam. This one. This one. That one too. Or they're all using it. And this one, you can see, I'm just wired up. Little input there, output there. Got this bulb on it. So it really comes down to these main components. You know, you got your TL494. That's the brains. You got your 12 volt regulator, um, switching MOSFET, which really what the 12 volt regulator is for so if you want to uh, have a uh, drive voltage of up to let's say 30 35 volts then you're not over driving the gates it's going to be a, a steady 12 volts that the um, chip is going to output <clears throat> to, the, to the gate whereas if you're using a, like a logic level fit as your uh, switching fit you might want to use a 5 volt regulator um, but I like to add a little signal LED there just to show me my frequency. And that's pretty much it. It's really simple to throw together. Uh, a lot of the pins are joined. But you can take them and just fold them over like that. So with this one, you can see I've got a separate power source, which is this little lithium here, which gets boosted by this circuit to about 12, 12, 13 volts and uh, circuit power isolated and this one that shares the uh, it's just one power in um, you can see basically the uh, source of the MOSFET it's just jumped over to the negative input terminal here and then the uh, drain is coming over to the output which you could say the, the negative terminal of the output and the positive terminal of the output is just coming down it's the same thing as the positive as your input which of course is also tied to the 12 volt regulator so that's feeding the uh, PDM, PWM circuit and then you're just jumping over power to uh, drive the MOSFET. As far as the frequency goes, see you've basically got a range. So <clears throat> right here I've got a particular range, it's hard to see on camera. But it becomes relatively solid all the way up. And right now, this frequency is being dictated by this capacitor here. It's 10 nanofarad, and um, or excuse me, this this capacitor here it's a 10 microfarad. And um, when I flip this switch, now it's being dictated by the 10 nanofarad which you know you're not going to be able to see the uh, speed but you can see the intensity of the LED increase with the frequency um, but all this switch does is more or less put this capacitor in parallel with that one so it's just two frequency ranges I prefer this for PWMing um, you can see using, using this as an interrupter for like a Tesla coil and uh, bumping that up gives me the inaudible range. If I wanted to feed a uh, audio signal in and not hear the circuit oscillation.